Hi everyone, this is Danny from Mysterious Things Tarot. And before I get started, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. You can't imagine what a thrill it is to see those numbers leap up. You keep liking and sharing and I'll keep videoing. I read all of your comments. So many of them have intuitive insights that really hit home. I always wonder how I can clearly pick up on some things and completely miss others that are so obvious to you. So I'm thrilled that you let me into your homes once a week and thank you so much for subscribing. Don't forget, even if you're subscribed, to like and share and let everyone know about the channel. So today's video is on an unsolved murder of Terry Missy Beavers of Red Oak, Texas on Monday, April 18th, 2016. Now, there have been so many YouTube videos on this tragic story over the years, speculating on the who and the why of this murder. Why then did I decide to do a video on it too? Well, first of all, one of you asked me to look into this because they were afraid the case was about to become a cold case and they wanted that person wanted Missy's story to be kept active. That it's a it's a valid request and an interesting investigation and thank you for the confidence uh, to allow me to delve into it a little bit. So in my research for this video, I came across this state of Texas website and it's a little long but bear with me because this is important not just for Missy but for anyone murdered and missing in Texas and I'm going to read you directly from the website so that I can get it accurate. Let me get up here. <clears throat> there are approximately 269,205 unsolved homicides in the United States and approximately 19,270 oh, and seven of those unsolved homicides in the state of Texas. To assist law enforcement agencies across Texas with their cold case investigations, the Office of the Attorney General created the Cold Case and Missing Persons Unit in March 2021. So this has just been created this year um, it, and it might help solve some of the things, uh, the cases that are getting cold like Missy. So it's very important. Individual agencies often lack the available funding and staffing to dedicate full-time personnel to work exclusively on cold cases. Forensic testing can be cost prohibitive and at times unavailable for agencies when current and active cases require more immediate attention. The mission of the Cold Case and Missing Persons Unit is to provide assistance and support to law enforcement agencies across the state and in the investigation and prosecution, if applicable, of unsolved cases including homicides, missing persons, and other matters centered around the human identification and forensic genealogy. The goal of the unit is to collaborate and coordinate with local authorities upon request of each agency to provide investigative assistance, training opportunities, state-of-the-art forensic testing, expert witnesses, legal research, and other helpful resources to support local jurisdictions in working unsolved homicide cases. The unit will strive to develop the best practices to effectively assess, strategize, and triage cases with the ultimate mission of holding perpetrators of violent crimes accountable and providing a measure of justice and closure to families who have been left with unanswered questions over time. 
There is a link to their site in the description box below if you would like to see it for yourself. And if you like the person that asked me to look into this, are uh, worried about a case becoming a cold case, which means they don't have any more leads to investigate and they're just at a dead end, um, this may be the place where you can get some help. So I, I, I hope that helps. I commend the state of Texas for coming up with this idea and, and putting it out there and coming up with this commission or um, unit within their office. So now I'm going to give you a brief description of the Terry Beavers case. It's been over five years with no progress solving Missy's murder. There is a video of the suspected murder, there is a tip line, and there is a $20,000 reward. Everyone has an opinion, just like every case on the internet, and there are even several psychics that have produced intuitions, but sadly, no new path to the truth has been found, and this tragedy has still not been solved. So I did a reading on it, and you may be surprised at what I found. For anyone who has not heard of the Terry Missy Beavers case, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about her. In her most basic form, Missy, as she liked to be called, was a wife of 18 years to Brandon Beavers, a local businessman. She was a mother of three girls, Hannah, 15, Allie, 13, and Sarah, 9. And she was a smart, college-educated woman. Coincidentally, being born August 9, 1970, puts Missy smack dab in the middle of Generation X. A 2011 report by the Center of Work-Life Policy has described Gen X as the wrong place, wrong time generation. They noted that they were thwarted by baby boomers who couldn't afford to retire, and they were threatened by the prospect of leapfrogging millennials. 49% of Gen Xers feel stalled in their careers and Missy was no different. Unfulfilled in her career as a special education teacher and feeling the pressure of getting older, Missy seemed to be in the middle of a midlife crisis. In midlife, women often look at their husbands and see an obstacle or a coworker in the parenting headquarters or kind of a distant character in their lives rather than someone to have sex with. Many people say things like, well, I do it all. What's he ever, what's he even here for? Or I could really use his closet space. Or they feel he's changed or they've changed and they lack the hope that either one of them will change again in a way that'll make things better. They're not sure how to fix things. When all your choices have led you to this place, how can you trust yourself to make the right choice now? 69% of those unsatisfied women decide to divorce. Others go outside the marriage. Missy's children were in school and they didn't need her full time anymore. And her husband was busy, busy with his business, which as most business owners will tell you is not just a nine to five situation. And Missy wanted something more. She wanted something different. She wanted to get back into shape, so she quit a job and started working as a contract fitness instructor for Camp Gladiators, a national fitness movement appearing in churches, parking lots, and football fields across North Texas. And she shined. Her bubbly personality returned, her body reshaped itself to pre-baby days, and she didn't feel haggard or puffy or frazzled. She felt fresh and vibrant. 
Here's a video of Camp Gladiators. Camp Gladiator. What is Camp Gladiator? Camp Gladiator is a wave of positive, life-changing energy sweeping the community. Created by American Gladiator Grand Champion Ali Davidson, the award-winning outdoor fitness <laughs> With 350 locations nationwide, Camp Gladiator is a four-week adult fitness boot camp where men and women of all ages and fitness levels can push themselves. Friends, family, and students all commented on Missy's commitment to the Gladiators, her transformation, and her ability to truly care about her students. But Camp Gladiator's parent company has really set some people off. The report says that once you join uh, Camp Gladiators, that canceling is nearly impossible. It takes a doctor's statement to get them to cancel your subscription, and it's not automatic. It takes months, and you're getting charged $75 a month to continue a program that you're not even using anymore. So that leads to unhappy gladiators and the gladiator attendees, not the instructors, have, have put in many complaints to the Better Business Bureau. And although Missy may have been a great trainer, could her inability to solve this type of problem for an injured former student have become a motive for murder? Probably not, but it's an interesting note. Back home, things weren't so rosy either. Yes, Missy had found some freedom, but her paycheck was small and irregular. And she was required by the parent company to attend events such as the conference in Austin that held the weekend before her death, where all travel inspect and expenses were on her. Yes, her kids were in school, but the responsibility of parenting her three girls fell, as with most households, on her. And I'm sure she had many sleepless nights when she was more than tired, trying to trust in herself when she was filled with doubt. Missy was also filled with pride for her new body and her new job that her husband didn't really seem to appreciate. And she began to look outside the marriage, flirting with more than one man and eventually having an affair. Well, no matter what it looks like in the movies, affairs are usually not sexy, fulfilling, and romantic. And the thrill of sneaking around and that honeymoon crush, that those feelings are generally not worth the cost of losing your family. And on some level, Missy that and told her husband of the affair. They decided, rather than divorce, to go to their church for counseling and had spent a year trying to rebuild the trust that had been broken. So that brings us to Monday morning. Missy originally planned to host her fitness boot camp in the Midlothian Creekside Church parking lot, about 20 minutes away from her home. But April rain forced her to teach the class inside. If it's raining, we're still training, she wrote on the, her Facebook the night before her murder. Also on that post, she said she planned on holding the class outside under the awning at the front of the church. Why did she go inside? Had she planned on meeting someone inside the church before class? But before Missy would get to the church that morning at 3.50 a.m., the closed-circuit TV surveillance footage captured an unknown individual breaking into the Creekside Church in Midlothian, Texas. The mystery person is seen on surveillance footage dressed head to toe in replica SWAT riot gear. Perhaps this was a disguise that was chosen in case the killer encountered anyone other than beavers. The staging of a burglary and the costume might have been part of a contingency plan to escape a confrontation with anyone else who might have been there. This unknown individual is seen on camera, slowly pacing the empty dark halls of the church. But as he or she is walking the hallways, the camera catches a glimpse of a hammer and a crowbar. 
In the video surveillance, the suspect appears to have a unique walk or gait. The suspect's feet appear to turn outward away from the body, more predominantly on the right foot. And it's possible that this gait was caused by a temporary condition, oh, an injury or misfitting shoes or something of that sort, and that the suspect no longer exhibits this walk or gait. The individual doesn't appear to spend any amount of time at any particular door or loca location of the church. And the church is set up so in a, in a square and in the outs there's a hallway that goes completely around the outside. The individual went down that hallway, breaking windows in the doors, opening them, looking in, and had gone almost all the way around that hallway back to the front door when Missy arrived. So just about that time at 4.15, Missy arrives at the church, gathers up her equipment that she would use to set up her room for her indoor class, and she hurried through the rain to unlock the church's front door. Missy didn't make it far into the building before she was shot and killed, presumably by the person in the police uniform a new student, eager to start their first class, pulled into the parking lot about 4.30 a.m. and parked and waited because he or she didn't know how to get into the church. A small, dark SUV was seen leaving the parking lot. I'm assuming it was seen by this person. Who else was there? And there were no cameras working outside the building. Another student arrives and the two of them now can enter the building. It's about five o'clock in the morning. And they immediately found Missy, quote, unconscious and unresponsive and bleeding from multiple wounds. She was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Now let me stop right here and clear up a couple of things. First, the police have never released the method of Missy's murder, but they say puncture wounds, which leads people to think of the hammer and the crowbar and, you know, whatever else tool, a knife would cause puncture wounds, right? But in the FBI's actual murderdata.org database, links are down below, it says death by gunshot wound. Also, the police have released video of a white Nissan Altima in a neighboring business parking lot, but they've never released information about the dark SUV that was seen leaving the church grounds. Why? Obviously, the police know more about this case than they're releasing to the public and leading people astray in their quest for the truth. I find in researching these cases that police often give misleading information. Although police have long been prohibited from using physical force, they're able to use a variety of very powerful psychological ploys to extract confessions from criminal suspects, including the use of deception. For example, the U.S. Supreme Court has allowed police to falsely claim that a suspect's partner confessed when in fact he had not, and to have found a suspect's prints at a crime scene when there were none. And state courts have permitted police to deceive suspects about a range of factual matters, including, for example, falsely stating that incriminating DNA evidence and satellite photography of the crime scene exist when they don't. So it's may be difficult for those of us outside the umbrella of the legal system to make any sense of how or why things are reported or not reported. In today's reading, I will attempt to bring a few new pieces of information to light. Let's keep Missy's case alive. Someone knows something, as the saying goes. Let's try to find out 
what that is. Today I am using The Wizard's Tarot by Barbara Moore. If you have not been to my channel before, let me explain how I read the cards. I pull three cards about what happened before the event. I pull, pull three cards about the event itself. And then I pull three cards about the aftermath of the event. Sometimes more than one card pops out, and if it does, I will use it. Because I feel like it's a message for me. Okay. Missy, tell me about before the event. Tell me how you were feeling before the event. What was going on with you? What was going on with you, Missy? Oop, there's some. Jumped right out. You pull these out. Quite a few jumped out, so we're going to... Um, Oh, and three cards about the event, and three cards about the aftermath of the event. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Well, before the event, Missy was feeling on top of the world. She had just come back from her Austin conference where at these conferences, they always pump you up and make you feel good. And she had been doing well. So she got some new recruits and, and she was feeling very good. She felt like she was um, starting to make some money as a teacher and she was feeling really good about that. Uh, she had maybe got some awards. The Eight of Cups here shows all the different levels where she could grow and um, she was feeling like she was really on the ladder of success. But she also felt like her hands were tied about something. There was some hidden, something hidden that she didn't want out and someone, uh, or maybe she did want out, but someone was keeping her, preventing her, someone or something was preventing her from doing what she wanted to do. There's something uh, holding her back here. She was literally tied up. Uh, and who was doing that? That was the emperor. So whether that was her husband or whether that was the head of the organization that she worked for, someone in authority had her hands tied about how far she could go in this organization. So she was really thinking about work, uh, proud of what she had accomplished, saw that there was a lot more she could do, and then a little bit frustrated because uh, there was someone holding her back from this. The event itself. Well, here we have the Two of Pentacles. So 
there was a decision to be made um, and this card represents gifts or money possibly a payment but there was there was some exchange of gifts now this is a a, a card it's called strength and it's a card of protection this um, woman here is being protected uh, very much protected with the dragon and with the magic so my thoughts are that this person may be female uh, is definitely being protected by someone Someone else knows, someone knows what happened, someone knows, and there's protection. Here's another card of protection, look at that. Here's the truth, the truth is there, but that person is being protected from the truth coming out. So although that didn't really tell us anything about Missy's death, I think she wants us to know that there is someone that knows maybe it's the authorities we don't know but someone knows there was an exchange of gifts that maybe someone was paid to do this um, Next, we look at, after the event, the Queen of Swords, the, the Queen of Truth, okay? So the truth is going to come out eventually, and there are messages, and how it's, how it's going to actually... The messages are going to... It's going, it's going to be sooner than later. I, I'm very surprised about this because it's been so long. But there's some messages that are going to come some piece of information and it's going to have you follow the money <laughs> it's going to have to do with money and they're going to get that information they're going to be able to figure that out and the six of wands here's the consequences um, here's the judgment the person will be brought to judgment okay i'm going to read a little bit more about i'm going to put these aside i'm going to read a little bit more with a, a different deck about the person who did this to missy i'm just going to pull um, a few cards tell me about who did this to Missy? Who killed Missy Beavers? Do we know the actual person? Did the police know? Tell me about the murderer of Missy Beavers. You can see my cards always get messed up there. They do what they want to do. I just let them. Oopsie. Oh, there we go. There's a snake. Tell me about the snake. Who's the snake? Oh, this one wanted to come out. Oh. Yeah, this was a decision. This was planned. It wasn't a robbery. Um, there was a snake. Um, did Missy know this person? Did Missy know who killed her? Um, we have the wheel of life. 
Um, that's just, I believe that this person that killed her knew her. Um, there are definitely secrets, very dark secrets. Of course, that would be with any murder anyway. And this person uh, maybe worked with Missy, worked with her, or maybe worked with her husband, worked with someone close to her, if not her herself. Now that's interesting. Let's find out a little bit more. Who is this person? Is this person a male or a female? Well, this is a... Uh, has to do with her this has to do with her relationship and the hawk so that hawk is messages um, communication so maybe there's something in her communications that will lead you to this and that's very interesting. This had to do with someone she was involved with or a friend of hers, a co-worker of hers, someone that she knew, someone she worked with, or someone her husband worked with, or someone her parents worked with, someone in her circle. And the last thing is the hermit. So. This person is hiding, um, uh, thinking that still after all this time, they're not free and easy. Let's see if the cards have anything else to tell us about Missy's killer. Can you give us insight on if this is a man or a woman. Oh, there it is. Mm, with somebody with a broken heart. Knight of Stones. Someone who is stubborn and maybe involved with the business, her business, and someone who had money, who seemingly has everything they need. And it's the this person is uh, is going to be found through a money trail. Still not getting male or female. Male or female? Is there more than one person? Maybe there was more than one person involved. being exploited, felt they were being exploited. They were attracted to her. Secret. It's secret. It's secret. It's secret. It's secret. There's all, it's all secret. Well, the cards aren't going to tell me anything more than that. There was a snake. This was planned. Secrets, secrets. The person was someone she knew. We had a broken heart. There's messages. They're being protected. They're still hiding. And it's not somebody you think. It's somebody that's got got money. So um, that's my reading. I hope you find it helpful and insightful and 
and we will see you next time. Please like and share and um, tell everybody about our little uh, program here. And I'll be back in a few minutes to tell you about the jewelry that I've got on today. Hi, today I have some vintage jewelry on. This is a, a very pretty. Is a gold hammered choker with seed beads in a um, braided pattern. This piece of jewelry was Tupperware. Did you know Tupperware made jewelry? I didn't, <laughs> but it, it is. So, Tupperware necklace. And these beautiful drop earrings are a gold tone and um, black onyx glass, not, not real onyx. Um, but they're fun and they're festive and they go with this. And so that's what I'm wearing today and It'll be on my website, on my FC website, Mysterious Things Tarot. Okay? Uh, you have a great week, and I'll see you next week. And hopefully we'll find uh, another story to keep you interested. Bye-bye.